<laughs> Jesus Christ. This hey, is... it's the fourth time. It's the fourth time we've started this. Hi, everyone. I'm Emily Wooden, and this is Mary Boom. Hi, hello, everyone. Hi, hello, indeed. And welcome to Freaks of a Feather podcast. Um, yes. This week's theme is just a lot of assholery. Oh. Um, just a lot of assholery. Even internal assholery. <laughs> Even internal extra. Yeah. Everything to do with the anus. Oh. Um, well, to start off with, one of my the highlights of my week, and I'm sure yeah. yours was. Oh, mine. Oh, my gosh. We have a friend who, she works in a proctologist's office. Yeah. And we're not going to say her name or where she works, but... Suffice it to say, she had an emergency this week, and <laughs> she, I mean, she was already there, so. She described it on the phone to me. Mm -hmm. Several days after this happened, this is like three <laughs> days later, which this would have been the same night type of call for me, because I would have been horrified. But she <laughs> says she was in the bathroom at her workplace. Now, she's post-menopausal, but she felt a gush between her legs. And it was blood. It wasn't paper here, poo poo. It was not <laughs> straight blood, and it wouldn't stop. She couldn't get it to stop. So, as one does at a doctor's office, when you're bleeding from your rectum, <laughs> you text somebody <laughs> to bring a doctor to you. So she's like, she's what she said. She's like, I was bleeding out my asshole. <laughs> She was very nonchalant, about and I was it. like, I texted the, <laughs> I texted the um. The girl up front to go get a doctor. <laughs> Come look at my asshole. <laughs> the second stall. Please. It's everywhere. Oh, it shouldn't be funny, but it's hysterical. It, it's so funny. But yeah, she had a thrombus internal hemorrhoid. So yeah, um, they had to pretty much stop the bleeding at work. And uh, <laughs> now she has to look at this physician in the eyes every day. So you got to imagine... <laughs> Monday is going to be quite interesting. <laughs> well, what do you, how do you go from there? Your relationship? Like, do you ask about the anus afterwards? Like I a couple of, like, how's your anus? There, <laughs> like, there is a secret Santa coming up and I think she has oh, someone yeah, a very yeah, yeah. special present. Oh yeah. Yeah. For certain, for certain. Oh, let's see here. Oh yeah. We were talking about things. Speaking of assholes, mm -hmm. I have my own asshole issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just, I just, you know, have an IBS, you know, sometimes you get, you get pain down there. Okay. okay. If you have it, you know what I mean? It mm -hmm. gets raw. Okay. If you know, you know, <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. Okay. And so sometimes one might need preparation age or quite honestly, just a lotion. Oh yeah. But <laughs> we were talking about things that you don't want to share. Yeah. <laughs> an asshole salve is one of them. Yeah. You just don't want to share that. I had offered my communal hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> she didn't want to partake. It's just like. Because, you know, it's not something that you share. You kind of want to have your own. I don't know. Like, you don't want to double dip from the asshole self. You, you don't want to use the same floss with somebody else. I mean, same what panties. else? Oh, no. Hell no. <laughs> there was somebody who was getting all weird about sharing toothpaste I saw a podcast or something mm -hmm. I was like oh my god you share toothpaste i'm like <gasps> i was like, i was like well how how the fuck yeah. do you use toothpaste do you fucking suck on it like what do you mean you just you that's how it works you, you, you squirt it onto the goddamn toothbrush you just put it in your mouth and chew on it's a special toothpaste right yeah you don't just like, <laughs> <laughs> like what are you talking about fucking stupid Anyways, oh, washcloths, you don't want to share those. God, these glasses are so dirty. It's criminal. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's criminal. It's disgusting. It's, it's been a butt a but whole week, so but you know week. what's on the glasses. But yeah, we've been watching a lot of that Guillermo del, del Toro series. Yeah, Cabinet of Curiosities. Is good. It's, it's Well, there are a few episodes, like, with the giant rats. I was like... <sighs> Yeah, Cemetery Rats. That one disappointed me. What was the other one we watched? Oh, the, the one other night? about the <sighs> the guy at art school who uh, came his friend his made 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 terrifying paintings <laughs> and they infected his mind <laughs> and his child. Which could be a really cool premise. I don't know, <laughs> but I was just kind of like, eh. 
but I mean, there were a lot of good ones. Yeah. Okay. It's like, hit or miss. It's hit or miss. It, it's on Netflix. It's totally worth worth a try. You know, you could give it a look see. Yeah, but yeah. we were watching. We were watching it, and every scene that you have in a movie of oh, we're we're in an artist's studio. We're in yeah. a class. We're drawing from life. If there's a woman there, you're gonna see Bush. You're gonna see tits. Mm-hmm. And they had a man in there, and I didn't get to see any pecker. <laughs> we were very like, where? Okay, we get to see breasts. Yay! Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Another set of breasts. I've got my own. I, I want to see a penis. Okay, <laughs> it doesn't have to be a pretty just- one. I think we were just commiserating over the fact that, you know, it's not something that you need in a film, but it's well, like, if a film's like, hey, here's some full frontal dong, you're like, you know what? Thank you. If you're going to show this tits, <laughs> show us a dick. Come on. What, are you just Thanks. fucking scared? Like, come on. <laughs> show us. I'll tell um, you one thing. Harvey Keitel isn't scared. There's a reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yeah. But yeah, um, you and McGregor too. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, my, my. But they need like, like the site does the dog die.com. They need is there a pecker.com? Yeah. Peep, <laughs> peep the peen.com, no, if you will. <laughs> is, is, is there a pecker.com? I just I'm sorry, hold on. Mom, hold on. <laughs> I need to we can't yeah. watch that. We can't watch Anne of Green Gables. There's no penis. No, mom. I'm sorry. There's there's three sets of tits. No schlong. We're not no schlong. watching it. Get with the times, mom. Get, the, get with the times. Also, so I mentioned the Pillow Book, which is a really great film. Mm-hmm. It's gorgeous, but you get to see you and McGregor quite often. And I haven't seen this, which mm, it's pretty would good. surprise you, considering you McGregor is <laughs> her my, dream, my dream, dream man. man. Uh, but yeah, it got me thinking of what is the the, the most explicit, like just <laughs> insane scene I've ever seen was in the series American Gods. Yeah, where the Jen, so the genie, meets up with um, he's a cab driver, and he meets up mm-hmm. with this other man, and they're having sex. And I swear to God, <laughs> it's it's not just the fact that it was like maybe 13 inches long it was also the fact that they felt the need we're going to illustrate we're going to we're going to have a graphic representation like an x-ray if you will of what it looks like when this man is entering the other man so you can see this guy's canal i'm oh. <laughs> just like that's a lot that's, that's a lot. lot i mean it was beautiful <laughs> um but anyways so we've had oh You've had a week, <laughs> collective couple of weeks. I've had some interesting collective couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so I thought tonight, oh, what the fuck? It's, it's stuck on me. Oh, oh, get me. Oh, oh there Free you me. Throw my bro. Oh, curse the um, didn't sweater. Thank you. Oh. Um, so I thought we would focus on torture, um, systems of torture or practices of torture. Yeah. So I would like to open with um, the preface to one of my favorite books, which is Discipline and Punish by Michel Foucault. Oh, it's very good. It's about the birth of the prison system and how it went from physical physical punishment to psychological punishment. It's very fascinating. Hmm. But my she right here let me get the fucking mm. snot and <laughs> bullshit off. Yes, <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Let's make this really big. Oh, Jesus. I'm scrolling. Oh, 13.5. That's way too small. You can use this plus button. Drag it over. Oh, my God. I'm I'm an old woman. <laughs> Drag it. Uh, just reduce it a little bit. Oh. There you go. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Look, look how big mine is. Mine's as big as it can get almost. Okay. Two hundred and sixty percent on my word, guys. Yeah, yeah, we might have to cut this out. This is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, on March first, seventeen fifty-seven. I hope my well, whatever. Damien's the regicide was condemned to make the amende honorable 
before the main door of the Church of Paris, where he was to be taken and conveyed in a cart, wearing nothing but a shirt, holding a torch of burning wax, weighing two pounds. So this guy was convicted of trying to kill the king, essentially, <laughs> trying to assassinate the king. And so this is what they did back in the day. Oh, I it was okay. bad. <laughs> oh, it's not great. <laughs> but it was very bad. It's, it's, it's not fun. <laughs> um, in the said cart to the Place de Grave, I don't know how to speak French. I'm probably butchering this, guaranteed. In the Place de Grave, where on a scaffold that would be erected there, it was ordered that the flesh be torn from his breasts, arms, thighs, and calves with red hot pincers. His right hand holding the knife with which he committed the said parricide, burnt with sulfur, and on those places where the flesh will be torn away, poured molten lead, boiling oil, burning resin, wax, and sulfur, melted together. And then his body drawn and quartered by four horses and his limbs and body consumed by fire, reduced to ash and his ashes thrown to the winds. I'm not angry. I'm just getting even. Well, that was part of it. It was like making, <laughs> making an example out of somebody mm -hmm. like you don't do this and this is why. And it was a big spectacle for everybody to mm -hmm. gather around and and watch like this was like an event watch the show this was an event it. back in the day <laughs> like this was done in the town square so everybody could come and watch so finally he was quartered recounts the gazette of amsterdam on the 1st of april 1757 this lost operation was very long because the horses were not accustomed to drawing Consequently, instead of four, six were needed. And when that did not suffice, they were forced in order to cut off the man's thighs and to sever the sinews and hack at the joints by hand. It is said that though he was always a great swearer, no blasphemy escaped his lips, but the excessive pain made him utter horrible cries. And he often repeated, my God, have pity on me. Jesus, help me. The spectators were all edified by the solicitude of the parish priest of St. Paul's, who, despite his great age, did not spare himself in offering consolation to the patient. An officer of the watch left his account. The sulfur was lit, but the flame was so poor that only the top of the skin of the hand was burnt, and that only slightly. Oh, God. Then the executioner, his sleeves rolled up, took the steel pincers, <laughs> which had been especially made for the occasion. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> which, That's a special thank you. <laughs> oh, just for me. Oh, gee. Well, this guy tried to kill the king. So this was a He's big, this was a big yeah. deal. Um, took the steel pincers, um, which were about a foot and a half long, and pulled first at the calf of the right leg and then at the thigh. So hooked all the way from the calf and drug it up the thigh. So basically, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then uh, from there, the two fleshy parts of the right arm and then at the breasts. Through a strong, though strong, sturdy fellow, this executioner found it so difficult to tear away the pieces of flesh that he hacked at it about at the same spot for two or three times, twisting the pincers as he did so. And what he took away formed each part of the wound about the size of a six pound crown piece. Fuck me. Oh. <laughs> oh. After these tearings with the pincers. <laughs> <laughs> these delicate, gentle movements. Damien's, the man who was being tried, well, not really tried, who was being tortured, <laughs> cried out profusely, though without swearing. He raised his head and looked at himself, and in the same executioner dipped an iron spoon into a pot containing a boiling potion, which he then poured liberally over each wound. Nice. Then the ropes that were to be harnessed to the horses were attached with cords to the patient's body. The horses were then harnessed and placed alongside the arms and legs of each limb. Okay. 
The clerk of the court went up to the patient several times and asked him if he had anything to say. He said he had not. At each torment, he cried out as the damned in hell are supposed to cry out. Pardon, my God. Pardon, my Lord. <laughs> Despite all this pain, he raised his head from time to time and looked upon himself boldly. The cords had been tied so tightly by the men who pulled the ends that they caused him indescribable pain. The clerk went up to him again and asked him if he had anything to say, and he said no. Several mm -hmm. confessors went up to him and spoke to him at length. He willingly kissed the crucifix that was held out to him, and he repeated, pardon me, my lord. The horses tugged hard, each pulling straight on a limb, each horse held by an executioner. After a quarter of an hour, <laughs> the same ceremony was repeated. And finally, after several attempts, the direction of the horses had to be changed. Thus, oh God. Those at the arms <laughs> were made to pull towards the head and those at the thighs made to pull towards the arms. This one doesn't want to snap <laughs> that way. Want... They struck, you know, the thing we did with that one guy two weeks ago? <laughs> that yeah. way. That way. <laughs> Come on, horsey, get a carrot. Um, <laughs> come on, come on. You, come on I'm pretty sure they, they, they smack them in the ass or they brand them <laughs> to make them run. I don't know. This was repeated several times without success. Two more horses had to be added to the harness and harnessed to the thighs. Oh, my God. Finally, the executioner, a man named Samson, said to the clerk that there was no way or hope of succeeding and told him that their lordships, if they wished to have the prisoner cut into pieces, that they needed to do it by hand. And so the clerk who come up from town ordered that the renewed efforts be made. And this was done. The horses gave up and one of those harnessed to the thighs fell to the ground. The confessors returned and spoke to him again. Da -da 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 -da. Um, after two or three attempts, the executioner Samson, who had used the pincers, Drew out a knife from his pocket and cut the body at the thighs, severing the legs at the joints. And the four horses gave a tug and carried off the two thighs after them, namely that of the right side first and the other following. And then the same was done to the arms, the shoulders, the armpits, and the four limbs. The flesh had to be cut almost to the bone. The horses pulling hard carried the right arm off first and then the other one afterwards. Sir, he's already dead. We can stop this, right? No! We have people <laughs> watching and they paid for their tickets. <laughs> they then picked up his torso, the trunk. He was still alive. Fuck that. <laughs> he was still alive. Fuck and that. they threw him on the fire. And. And so, in accordance with the decree, the hole was reduced to ashes. The last piece to be found in the embers was still burning at half past ten in the evening. Oh, God. Don't Ugh. burn it too hot. Burn it nice and slow just, and steady. But can you imagine, this was just, like, common fare to, like, go out and, like, see, like, people be strung up in the, in the square or, you know... Yeah, drawn in court. I'm like, this is like extreme, <laughs> but that that kept people from, you know, fucking around. Yeah, you know, you, know, you like, fuck around, you find out real fast. They're like, what are you doing Friday night? I'm like, <laughs> you know what I'm doing? I'm doing what everybody's doing. We're looking at the spectacle of a man yeah. being tortured and torn to pieces and right. burned. Oh yeah. Oh well, yeah. And um, I don't know. I took this class that was on, um bandits and outlaws and like like punishment in this prison system mm -hmm. um do you know where um the uh, little mandrakes little human roots where that stems from that myth mm -mm. when a, a man is hung by the neck from a scaffold or a tree okay. sometimes an erection occurs and semen no and <laughs> semen <laughs> then hits the ground and there was an old fable or tale that that's what mandrakes are made from is the semen of hung men i am groot <laughs> <laughs> y'all <laughs> so, groot's daddy was hanging by a noose <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry real dark um but yeah, people would go up like, um, 
it was like a huge religious spectacle. It was enacting the punishment and the might of God on someone to sh yeah. keep everybody in line. And like the whole town would get involved. Like women would run up and they would, they would tear away like pieces of clothing yeah. from the hung man and they would use it to like dad, to like, Vab with <laughs> no they would they they people would cut pieces of flesh off they would they would take the dirt from the man and like you because it was like mystical so sort sacred, of thing yeah it it's wow. fucked <laughs> wow yeah yeah so cool oh god torture <laughs> sounds simple so, well, sounds very <laughs> simple very simple but yeah, yeah, so um, should we? Should we? Oh, I need something a little bit brighter after that. Yeah, um, I, I think so. What um, what are some things we can celebrate today at Celebration Station, USA? <laughs> well, not getting drawn and quartered. No, we're we're definitely not being tortured in that kind of way. Oh it's God, more no. of a slow mental torture that we're we're both experiencing. <sighs> um, however, yeah. I would say for like my week, the things that I'm like, okay, cool. This is good. Mm -hmm. um... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, had a, I had a date night. That was cool. That was fun. Yeah. Um, and my kid cleaned his room kind of good, but kind of bad. But he did it. So I, I, some wins there. How about yourself? Um... <laughs> You're like, well, let me let me chew on this I for a minute. I applied to a job. Um, yeah. Which I don't know if that's. I mean, it's good, but. Yeah. Um, I've been really depressed. Um, yeah. <laughs> life has changed so much, but I try to keep positive. Um, yeah. Spending time with my dog. It's been nice. Yeah. Um, going for that walk. That was, that was nice. That was nice. Um, it was very beautiful. We should do more of that. There's mm -hmm. we we have a lot of greenway space out here, and they're all intertwined. It was and they very connect nice to the downtown. It's a really cute little old town. Yeah, lots of natural springs. It was really oh, very yeah. pretty. It was nice. So that was that was good. Yeah, but you know, she don't struggle, but. A little bit. Well, Mary, for our next um, mm. <clears throat> torture, <laughs> method of torture, <laughs> I didn't know about this one. Okay, this is called keel hauling. Oh, okay. And so this was a punishment that was inflicted for various offenses by the Dutch Navy. It's performed by plunging the culprit repeatedly under the ship's bottom and hoisting them up the other side. After, oh, fuck that. After having passed under the keel. So there are blocks and pulleys which are used. And um, he's suspended and then fastened to the opposite extremities is a weight or a lead. Right? And so the apparatus is drawn close up to the yard arm. And then, and then suddenly he's let to fall into the sea. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Where? Passing under the ship's bottom... He is cut to pieces by barnacles. He hits the boards. He sometimes they would die immediately, sometimes not. But um, they would only you. It would be so cold in the ocean that you wouldn't feel the pain until you were hoisted out. Then you would feel all the cuts, all the stinging, all the pain. In your body, broken bones from like broken bones against the bottom of the and boat. then they would fucking oh. toss you over again and do it again <laughs> until again. until and sometimes till you were dead. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Ling Chi. Okay, so mm. Ling Chi translated means lingering death. Oh, or great. slow slicing, also known as death by a thousand cuts. Oh, no. Is this where your, like, head is on one of those deli meat slicers at Kroger? <laughs> 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 no, please. Please. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> please. 
Please tell me what they do at Kroger. The bad employees. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> you knew this was coming, bad boy. <laughs> bad boy. I gotta make a make an example out of you to all the underlings. Um, no, so the lingering death or death by a thousand cuts is a form of execution in China from 900 CE up until about the early 1900s. Okay. Hmm. So it was also used in Vietnam and Korea. Okay. Right. And in this form of execution, a knife was used to methodically remove slivers and portions from the body over an extended period of time. And it's, yeah. And it's important that the, it started off very small and grew in increments till it was more violent and deeper in the flesh. Hence a thousand cuts. Oh. And so it was reserved for crimes viewed especially heinous, hmm. such as treason. And even it says here, some Westerners were executed in this manner. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. sure. Um, even after the practice was outlawed, the concept of still itself still appeared across many types of media. So yeah, yeah. Slough. Wow. Yeah. So well, again, we're talking about the deli counter. Be careful. I mean, we're talking about like days. Days. I'm pretty sure they got a timer on that thing <laughs> for the people at Kroger. Or Ingles. <laughs> or Food City. Or whatever grocery you have. <laughs> Can't take days to execute someone. Well, not in this economy. <laughs> okay. Okay, so. I'm sorry. I'm just so blind. I don't. Okay. I don't want to wear my glasses because it makes a reflection. <laughs> oh. Okay. So, the next one we have is. And I'm going to butcher this. Puena cole. From the Latin, meaning penalty of the sack. <laughs> well, penalty of the sack was um, a death penalty that was imposed um, on a subject who had been found guilty of patricide, usually. Mm. Killing one's father. And this was under Roman lore. Ooh. And so the punishment consisted of being sewn up in a leather sack with an assortment of live animals, including a dog, snake, monkey, and a chicken or rooster, and then being thrown into the water. And so the idea of it is all of these creatures are going to be fighting for their lives. So, you amongst know, you. amongst you. So who, you know... Those poor animals, what did they do? I, I know. I know. I mean, I'm thinking the snake's dying first, obviously, then the chicken. Yeah. And then it's the monkey. Oh, that's the one that I don't know. That thing's going to be biting at you. That thing is mean as fuck. at you. <laughs> I mean, chimps are questionable to begin Maybe with. Maybe masturbating on you, monkeys, <laughs> you know? I mean, qu chimps are questionable to begin with. Mm -hmm. You throw them into a life or death situation. They're going to masturbate still. <laughs> They're still going to jerk off on you. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Every time. Um, the first example of the documented case of using this is from 100 BC. Um, but they think that it developed earlier. So the inclusion of live animals in the sack is only documented from early imperial times. And at the very beginning, only mm. snakes were mentioned. So, Yeah. Ooh. The most well-known form of punishment was documented where a cock, a dog, a monkey, and a viper were inserted in a sack. <laughs> <laughs> along with the along with the um culprit and doused into the sea. Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, mm. it kind of makes my problem seem a lot smaller <laughs> talking about these types of torture. So Yeah, no, that's why I thought it like it would make a, you know. Yeah like you know make me feel a little bit better yeah, at least i'm not in a sack with a bunch of animals also fighting for their lives as we slowly drown together you're not in a sack with a monkey no a leather sack with a monkey i don't want to be in a room with a monkey no in close proximity no eyeball to eyeball 
in water? <laughs> Who knows? No. What could happen? Who knows? I mean, we've talked about this before, but monkeys terrify me. I <laughs> I feel like you'd have to kill the monkey before you or the monkey died. <laughs> you'd have to face being you just have... clawed to death by the monkey or killing it. <laughs> you just have to choke that motherfucker out. You... I just don't know. You'd have to grab it by the throat and just <laughs> bend as hard as you can. Try to snap so its little terrible. neck. I just... <laughs> I mean, you save the dog, obviously, but <laughs> I mean, you know, either way you do it, your your death is going to be painful. Either you're it's taking a real... life as you're losing yours. I don't know. What are they <laughs> tying? I mean, this is a big sack. This is quite the sack. <laughs> this is a giant sack. And I want to know how well this sack is closed. It makes up. me wonder if it's like a fishing net. <laughs> It'd be so Just easy. Full of people in the and then you throw. Oh boy, it how am I gonna get out of this? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. This no, it said leather sack. <laughs> leather sack. <laughs> now listen, monkey, you're gonna chew a hole in the sack. Make an angry face. <laughs> I'm gonna use you like a Brillo pad against this thing. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> use the chicken's beak as mm -hmm. <laughs> a, a knife. I don't fucking know. It's ridiculous. I mean, there would be a hole in the sack either way. Yeah. That's a lot of leather. That's a whole cow for a sack. That's a whole ass sack. That's a big sack. Big sack. Mm. Mm. Now, my f not my favorite torture, but one that I thought was pretty bizarre mm -hmm. was the brazen bull. Oh, okay. Also known as the Sicilian bull. Or the bronze bull. Or the bull of Phalaris. Hmm. So, the brazen bull was the torture and execution device designed in ancient Greece. And according to Diodorus Siculus, um, recounting the story of Bibliotheca Historica, Perelius of Athens invented and proposed to Phalaris, proposed it to Phalaris, the tyrant of Agraga, Sicily, that this be a new means of torturing criminals. Hmm. The bull was said to be hollow and made entirely of bronze with a door on one side. Hmm. According to legends, the bull was designed in the form and size of an actual bull. And inside was built an acoustic apparatus that would convert screams into the sound of grunting. I don't know how you get that. Um, very interesting. Very, 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 very creative. Very yes. spending a lot of time on that one. Yes. Um, the condemned were locked inside the device and a fire was set under, under it, uh, heating the metal until the person inside was roasted to death. Um, yeah. It's expressly associated with the tyrant Phalaris. Um, yeah, the head of the bull had a system of tubes and stops so that this prisoner's screams were converted into the sounds of a bellowing, infuriated bull. Yikes. Yep. Yikes. Stories allege that after finishing the construction on the execution device, Perilous said to Phalaris, his screams will come to you through the pipes as the most tender, most pathetic, most melodious of bellowings. I don't know why I made it sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> this is what the Jamas did. I tell you. <laughs> this was Ram. It wasn't Jam. God. It's so bad. <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh, God. And they would often put um, like cloves and incense in the wood underneath. Ooh. So, you, you know, you got, that, you got that smell of like meat cooking in there. Mm -hmm. And you got the spices on the outside, kind of like okay, you know, something yeah. very aromatic. <laughs> and then the it. whole town had pulled pork, Hell pulled yeah. long pig, if you will. I mean, at least they <laughs> get something out of it, I guess. It's so fucking gross! Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, oh, this is funny. Um, Perilous believed he would receive a award for his invention. Mm -hmm. 
Instead, Phalaris, who was disgusted by these words, ordered it to be tested by Perlaeus per by tricking him to get into the bull. Like, oh, let's see. Let's see if it sounds like a bull. Get on in. <laughs> Shut him inside. And then stoked the fire. What a dick. So that Phalaris could hear the sound of his screams. But before Perlaeus could die, Phalaris opened the door and took him away. Phalaris is then to have said, taken Perlaeus to the top of a hill and thrown him off, killing him. Phalaris himself is claimed to have been killed in the brazen bull when he was overthrown by a Telemachus, the ancestor of Theron. Well, good. Sounds like he deserved that at the very least. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look, it only attested. Let's see. That's fucked. That but is you know, fucked. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think I'm gonna be okay. When I think about these different forms of torture, I think, yeah. you know, yeah, having a 13 year old that screams at you is okay. Because I'm not in a sack with a monkey. <laughs> I'm not that I'm going to have to strangle. Oh my I god, I'm not suffocate. in close proximity with uh an ape. A pongo pygmaeus, if you will. Yeah. A, a fucking chimpanzee. I can't stand them. Mm -hmm. They're disgusting. I hate the way they look. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't hurt one. No. I would never intentionally go no. out of my way to hurt one. But if it was between me and the chimp and it was coming at me, mm -hmm. I would choke that motherfucker out. I'm I'm gonna listen. If you put me in a room with your chimp, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> but I'm going it... to give you it as well because I want to <laughs> hope that you've trained it well and that you're a good monkey parent. <laughs> However, <laughs> if it looks at me funny, <laughs> if it Charge does it. one of these, <laughs> when you walk out of the room, I'm going to stab it with a dinner fork. I'm going to do what I have to do if I'm put in that situation. <laughs> stab it with a dinner fork. If things will be awkward between us, but I will come out of this alive. And so will you. I will stab it Thanks in the temple me. with a screwdriver. <laughs> anyway. I don't know. Monkeys are gross. I don't know. I don't know. They're not for me. I'm um, sorry, zoologists. Um, was, uh, like, and that's what I've been getting on TikTok, too. A bunch of monkey. Oh, that's yours. That's yours. Oh, no, yeah. Sorry, don't sorry. take mine. Don't take mine. Uh, it's a bunch of monkey parent videos, oddly enough, in Tennessee. Why, why, the fuck, why the why? fuck do you have a monkey? You don't need to have a monkey. It's and given they're not chimpanzees, they're little, the little capuchin monkeys or whatever. And I'm like, what do you have a fucking monkey? I mean, if you're good to the monkey, fine. But they also have a tiger haven in Tennessee. <sighs> and let me tell you, they're all a bunch of you know <laughs> Joe exotics, if you will. But you know, pillbillies. There is a weird overlap between. Pillhead hillbillies and, and exotic animals. There really is. It's bizarre. <laughs> like my grandmother would talk, not that she was a pillbilly, but she would talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi. <laughs> well, mm, she's more classic than a pillbilly, but she would talk about all the time, like, yeah, back in the 70s, like it was common for people to be like, I have a monkey. Oh, so cool. Have one, right? <laughs> like, what do you have a monkey? Until they had have one. a monkey, and she was like, "And I hated my friend's monkey because you'd go over all the time. It had to wear a diaper because if it didn't, it would just masturbate at you furiously." <laughs> and we're sitting at dinner when she's like, "It would just." <laughs> I remember. I think <laughs> it was a Thanksgiving. I went to your. I went to Emily's family's Thanksgiving, and her grandma was. Yeah. Very, very descriptive. Very candid. And words and motions. You just come. You would tr you would go into the bathroom because that's where his cage was, and you'd walk in and he would rip his diaper off and just. Yeah! <laughs> they put him in the bathroom where guests had to go to the bathroom. Imagine you walk <laughs> in my bathroom and you have to take your pants off. It's a shit in front of this monkey. And you have to go to the bathroom in front of a <laughs> monkey masturbating at you. The joke was on the guest. <laughs> 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 
Just don't make eye contact with him and it's fine. <laughs> He'll calm down. Just don't make eye contact with him. He'll finish. Let him finish. He gets angry if he doesn't finish. He will bite your fucking throat. Let him finish. <laughs> don't try to pet him through the bars. He's very stressed. <laughs> I just never got that. I never understood. No. We have that. I had that friend in high school who would always he. It was so weird. He, every every week there was a new animal, an oxalotl, a daegu, which that's not a racial slur. Daegus are little jumping kangaroo mice. Oh my gosh! Stop. Very close to a racial slur. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, weird. Yeah, I don't get it. He had a tarantula too, and I gotta tell you, I do not like how fast those move. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe he's a he's a vet or a vet tech or something like that now. Um probably not. He's probably at the Greyhound bus station right now, but I mean, let's be so honest. Mean. I'm so mean. <laughs> Hey, they weren't nice to me. Now I get to be mean. <laughs> <laughs> I get to be mean. Oh, my God. But yeah, so torture, torture devices. So you have what? The Iron Maiden. Yeah. Little, little, sort of like a sepulcher, like a little, like a casket, right? Yeah. That has spikes and then you close it in and it pinches the, mm. Mm. Yikes. Oh, <laughs> boring. Um, <laughs> You have the pear, the um, devilish pear. Mm -hmm. You want to guess what that is? No, I haven't really looked too far into torture. Oh. <laughs> well, it's this pear. It's an it's this device. It's in the shape of a pear, but you uncrank it. You it has a little crank, you know, and then parts of the pear expand. Okay, and they're razor sharp blades. <laughs> Nice. And it unfolds like a little flower, right? Oh, like a bear uh, trap. <clears throat> no, no, no. You like crank it and then the pear unfolds mm -hmm. and it's all these blades. And so, you know, you can imagine where you would insert said pear. Oh. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking of a life size, size version. Okay. All oh, right. Oh, no, 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 no. It, it, yeah. Oh, oh it insert it into your anus and then. Oh, okay, okay. Outward. Okay. Oh my god. It's also the Spanish donkey. Mm. Which was basically like a pyramid, but an elongated pyramid. What would you call that? Um God, it's been so long since I've been in school. Anyway, a shape. You were basically made to sit on this Ooh. with the the pointed end going up into your orifice basically and they would put tie your hands behind your back and then put weights and increase the weights on your ankles so it basically like ripped you in half from your crotch so you can imagine being a woman oh god or oh, hell or a man well yeah i mean It'll both are bad both are it. bad Ooh. but maybe with being a woman it'd be quicker maybe swifter. I don't know. I don't want to know personally know. how that would feel. The Spanish donkey. Then, oh. then thumb screws, but you know. Oh, yeah. Just a little device, put your thumbs in, and you crank it, and oh. stoning, you know. Waterboarding. Waterboarding. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Walk in the park compared to some of these. All that sort of yeah. stuff. Um. Unless you're possessed and getting waterboarded by the hour for days. Yeah, that happened. That happened. <laughs> that happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so hmm. that's our episode on torture, everybody. I hope yeah. it was um, relaxing. Um, well, or at the very least, you know, maybe you're having a bad week too. Hope not. But if you are, maybe this will help you feel a little better. Maybe less be alone. Like, hey, at least it's not that bad, right? At least I'm not, right? I'm not getting drugged by the balls against a bunch of razor sharp barnacles on the bottom of the boat. I'm not getting boat. split into four by a horse and it not working very well. And then them chopping it, yeah. chopping me in and pieces. Eventually dying by being burnt. 
I mean, I for fuck's sake, just cutting you up and pouring molten lead into your wounds. Like, ooh. Make me into a pretty coffee table, someone. Jesus, God. Um, <sighs> anyways, um, yeah. we love you. Um, please do subscribe, like, comment, I guess. Yeah, check out our YouTube videos. If you are listening to us wherever you get podcasts, this will be a YouTube video. And we have our previous yeah. episode as one as well. So, so check it out. Yeah. Um, you know, you can still listen to us on, you know, Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all that. Yeah, Shit, we'll, so. we'll, we will still be there. Mm -hmm. But if you want to see us in person, check us out on YouTube. Check us out. Yeah. And, oh, oops. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You'd see that if you'd watch the YouTube channel. Oh. Risky. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.